So I get questions all the time on how do I paint my characters in Photoshop and this one especially right here is one that received a lot of questions on Instagram on how do I do the details, how do I do the, the, the soft shading versus the hard shading, how do I blend colors for the skin, how do I paint the hair for example. Uh, so I saved a bunch of stages of this PSD right here and I'm gonna go through all of them and explain you guys how did I do it so that you can replicate the process in your own paintings. What's up guys, Lucas here. I'm a concept artist and illustrator working for video games in this channel. It's all about art and living a creative life. So if that's something that you like, consider subscribing. So this painting right here, I will be using my iPad to show you guys the process, but in fact, most of the painting happened in Photoshop in the computer. So this is a workflow that you guys can use in Photoshop, in Procreate, Fire Alpaca, Medibank, Krita, or whatever software you want. It doesn't matter if it's in the iPad, in Photoshop or wherever. Almost every program right now for you guys to paint will have enough options for you to be able to, to to use this process. So let's start by going through the layers. So you can see that I have several layers right here showing the steps and this one right here is the first step and I know it's pretty, I know it's pretty different from what the, the painting came to be afterwards but this is this is for you to know that, that you know you have to start somewhere right so this was the first sketch this was this was a painting done for a guy on instagram that asked me for 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 a painting of his wife and i said yes all right let's do it again just starting super loose uh if you don't have to to show this process to anybody then you don't have to even worry about like cleaning it up putting different colors here it was just because it was for him that i decided to make it a little bit more presentable with the background and a mask behind the sketch otherwise you can just go to the next step. Here's the next step and you guys can see how big of a difference it was because of course the, the first sketch conveyed kind of the idea of what I wanted but her anatomy was a mess, the perspective was a mess and the stylization of the character was definitely not to my liking. So I started with this second one and I, I tried to convey a little bit more of the proportions that I wanted and the stylization that I wanted. I took some reference from artists that I like and, and you know just made it better so here you can see that I went with a thinner brush just to make sure that I capture details that I wasn't able to capture in this other one for example the structure of her face I just could refine her a little bit more with this smaller brush so that's that's how I went to this painting and immediately after that if I was happy with the pose I jumped to the next step that was the masking and here I was trying to pinpoint what was a what were the colors that I wanted for the final painting of course they ended up changing a bit from this to the final one but you guys can see that it was kind of around there already and the masking uh, if you have seen some other of my videos you, you know what I'm referring to masking is to go and separate each of the parts of your painting that are overlapping into different layers in in Photoshop or whatever program you're using this will make it much, much easier for you guys to put the shading and the lights on top of this one, each of these parts. Okay, so here you can see that I started adding still like the pure start of some color variation. For example, right here on the knees, you can see some, some color variation in the parts where I wanted. For example, the knees are a little bit redder and the face is a little bit redder in general, just to create some contrast. And also something very important is the colors are not very strong. So that is something that I, I see a lot of people doing this mistake. When they go and they choose the base colors, they choose like super saturated or super dark colors. And this is a mistake. So be careful when you choose these colors. I'm gonna go here to the classic. Choose them around this center area of your color palette. Because if you go all the way up here, down here, in any of these extremes is gonna make it really hard for you to work on top of this color so I will try to maintain them in the middle okay so once you have all the masks divided in different for the different parts of the body the shading starts and here's how I start the shading of this one you can see quite a big quite a big jump from from the previous one to this one let's go and see the change again so here the only thing that I did is add an 
adding a layer of multiply to each one of the parts and you can see up here these two colors are the colors that i used for the for the shadow so i just selected that color and i used it used it as a multiply layer on top of each one of the masks so i'm going to explain to you a little bit how do i do that how do i do that masking so let me just create a new layer i'm gonna for now just cover this thing I'm using Procreate, by the way, to use the to demonstrate all of these guys, in case that you're wondering. And let's just create something random. Let's say, like a random middle uh, skin color. So this was what I was using for the skin, right? After that, I just created a, ma a new layer on top, and I clipped it, clip mask from this one to the one that is lower. I select an airbrush and I select the color of the shadow. So let's go down here and select again the color that I was using for the shadow. This one it is. Again, back to the layers. And I put this layer on multiply mode and multiply, what multiply is gonna do is it's gonna make the colors darker. So with multiply, multiply and the brush selected, I just went in here and selected the shapes that I wanted to to make darker so for example if this is a soft shadow it's gonna be softer on this side but let's say that she has the knee in here it's gonna be harder harder in here and then again softer in the parts where the the shape turns softly so you can see how easily you can start conveying a three-dimensional shape for anything that you want with this simple method okay so that was what i did for all the little parts of the body to go from the previous step to this one. So let's see the change again, here and here. All right, so let's go to the, to the next one. This one right here is the next layer that I added after I added the basic shadows. And you can see the difference, that the main difference besides of course some details or some, some care done for example in the face area. Let me choose a smaller brush for you guys to see. So besides of course some detail there in the area of the face sorry here you go and some darkening of the chains and things like this the biggest change was in the body in areas that look upward so let's see it again those changes you see some definition on the top on the areas that face upward towards the the light so let me explain this to you if for example we go back to the example that we had up here and let's say that there is an object covering the light i'm gonna move the shadow so that more of this object is covered by the shadow let's say that all of this is covered by the shadow and only a little rim of the object is available for the light so there is a way without any type of light we need to understand that this object is round the way that we do it do this is if i lock the transparency and locking the transparency means that i will block the transparent pixels in this layer so for example this one right here layer 12 is where i painted the shadow if i lock the transparency here i'm gonna click alpha lock that means i am not able to paint outside of the pixels that are already painted so if i for example take white color and i paint in here you can see and this is in normal mode normal mode where is the normal mode in here there you go normal you can see that this white cannot paint outside of the of the pixels that were already painted so what we are going to do is once the transparency is locked we are gonna choose a different color and this color will represent the light of the environment for example if we are in the outdoors and we have the bl bright blue sky around us then we will be able to see some of that blue filtered in the shadows not so bright maybe but something like around here maybe it's not gonna be as light as the real light but it's not going to be as dark as the shadow so let's go right here and choose something in the lines of this 
and we are gonna paint. So this color right here would represent these surfaces that are looking upwards and are still in the shadow. So you guys, I hope that this uh, explains the difference. This is exactly what I did to paint in this step. These shadows and these shapes that are still in the shadow, but I needed to define some, some type of volume to it, okay? Those are the critical steps actually to the painting. Before, after these ones, are, it's going to be more careful painting, okay? So let's look what happens in this next step. The next step, of course, you can see that the hair has some, a very big change, but the, what happened is that I made the colors more vivid and I decided on a different shape. Before it was very curvy and very organic. And afterwards I decided to kind of cut it with a knife and this is just a style preference of course it doesn't have anything to do with your preference as an artist I just decided to do to go in that way so nothing to explain here I added of course some more detail of course in her breasts added this little um, like pendant or whatever in her belly button and in general made the colors more vivid of course I defined the, the shadow and the light of the chain which makes it a little bit more under understandable and there is nothing fancy here you guys can see that it was just a mask and then I went with a very with a very random uh, brush to just define some of the some of the points of shadow and light nothing very fancy very something very simple actually and I can oh of course and what happened to the to the wing which I thought maybe was going to be all covered in shadow because of course the, the you have the wing against the shadow against the light and you will not be seeing any of the light going through it but then I thought it would be way cooler if the if the wings have some type of, of translucency for example like when you put your ears or your fingers against a very strong light and you can see your the, the effect of surface scattering through it, like your blood vessels and things like this. Well, that was what I was thinking with the, with the wings. And I think it looks way cooler. So let's go to the next step. Here is the next step. And in this one, I finally took care of the background because it was a mess before that. Just those random like flames that I did with the last tool just didn't cut it anymore. So. I added these sparks, the way that I made these sparks, in case that you're wondering, is very simple. I just went with a soft brush, soft brush, I picked a very hot red, went with something like this, and then slowly started sliding to the orange, painted in the center, started adding more and more yellow, and going more and more to the center, and more and more saturated going here so as simple as that if you want to add some blur you can of course add some blur maybe that will help that is with the smudge tool but of course it depends on you that was as simple as it can get the way that I did those those little uh, flames and for the background I took I just made some random shapes with the airbrush to get this effect of the of the clouds and the god rays these god rays, the god rays are these, these strikes of light that go behind the character, kind of in this, in this shape. I don't know if you can see them even. But these god rays were very easily made. The only thing that I did was creating them like this. Made a strike of light, a streak of light, sorry. And then lowered the opacity quite a lot. And erased in the parts that I didn't want. So very easy to make. This was a, a very economic painting. The only thing that I had to pay attention to was the, the character and the background was super easy to make. Just little cheats here and there to save me some, some time. I hope you guys are enjoying the tutorial, by the way. This is a very, very detailed tutorial on this specific phase uh, piece. If you guys are getting some value from it, I would really appreciate if you click on the like button and of course if you give me a comment about it, like what part was your favorite, what part did you find useful, and of course what other doubts do you have, things that I just didn't mention or things that you would like to know more in depth. I'm in the process of making a, a very, very, very in-depth tutorial about everything that I know about digital painting, so if you guys are interested at all in that, in that course, 
because it's going to be a, a big ass curse um, just drop me a comment saying uh, yeah I'm interested or go to lucaspeinador.com and sign up for the new newsletter I would really love to to have you guys there so that I can tell you when the course is out so this one was the next step and this uh <laughs> this is the step that everyone loves right because it's the the shines finally and these shines you can see them where did I, did I add them at them I put them right there in the corners for example in the parts like I'm gonna point them to you like this little part in the lips in the corner of the hair where it bends also in here in here and of course in the chain in every part of the chain that it bends towards the light I try to add a little bit of those of those shines that help quite a lot to make the picture juicier and, and just nicer to watch so you can see the difference again before and after in the leg there was there is this really big one that also helps a lot right here and for those all of those doubts like for example if you say like okay I understand I have to put highlights in a certain step of the of the painting and usually a lot of artists do it at the end of the painting but you don't you're not sure exactly in what part of the of the anatomy or the character of the, or the prop to put it in then uh, again this is something that goes related to basic drawing fundamentals this one is related to construction and to value so if you guys have any doubts on how to do these things just get yourself some tools like for example these guys that i have right here they are from 3d total great tools to, for you to work with and just put a random light against them and paint them i assure you that after you paint some of these some spheres some blocks of wood that you have around the house you will start getting the hang of how to paint these things where to put the highlight where to put the shadow okay so with all of this let's go to the final step that are the the little touches the, like the final final like the cherry on top of the pie type of thing and here it is you can see that before and after is very subtle for for maybe this scale but you can see different things one of the biggest things that happened was that i added a light source from the bottom of the picture from this direction upwards so you can see it in the front of her legs and in some of the faces of the chain right here right here right here right here all of these parts received this contact of the light because i wanted this fire to be a little bit better integrated with the lady so yeah that's why i did that and of course you can see some of the the noise layer that i always put in all my paintings and some more emphasis in the in the tattoos because the the guy that asked me this painting wanted the tattoos to be more more visible so there you go let's see again one last um change from from the first one to the last one here to here and there we go from this to this this was, I don't know how many hours of work, maybe uh, eight, eight hours of work, I think. And it's, well, it pays off, it pays off. Uh, don't be discouraged by the time that a painting takes it, it, you know, like we are always there. We are always, we always feel that we don't, we are not painting fast enough or that we are not efficient enough because our, we are always comparing ourselves with artists that are ahead of us in the journey so don't get discouraged by it it's 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 gonna be hard always painting is one of these things that you just have to try to master it the entire life okay so i hope that you you like this tutorial i hope that you learned some things from here uh please tell me in the comments if you if you enjoy it or if you have any other doubts Guys, thank you very much for watching this video till the end. Leave me a like if it was useful and of course, subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you guys on the next video.